course, every year since I've been back in Congress, I introduce a, a, a bill that would ab abolish se selective service. Selective service uh, uh, and the draft just means the government is stating the fact that they own a certain group of individuals. And uh, there are two, two things I think the government emphasizes on, on ownership of people. One is the income tax to prove that they own everything we earn and that we are obedient and only keep a certain part. And that, of course, is why I want to get rid of the income tax. <laughs> And, of course, of course, the other is the selective service, and uh, if you can draft people off and go fight undeclared war, that's a, a pretty bad uh, situation. But, you know, um, another issue that I talk about a lot, although it's an economic issue, it's also an issue of foreign policy, and that has to do with, do with the monetary system. Um, we, you know, we have, in the 20th century, and it looks like this century as well, uh, we seem to be having, having continuous wars. And um, the Federal Reserve was uh, started in 1913, and quickly thereafter, we financed each and every war through the creation of new money and credit. Is a deceitful is that we had to pay for the guns and butter of the 1960s, and the fallacy uh, of the uh, of the uh, policies that we had to get us in, in Vietnam. But we had to pay for it. But this idea that you can tax and then inflate to support illegal, unconstitutional, unwise military adventurism uh, is something that could be really slowed down a whole lot if we just made sure that a, a mo secretive monetary scheme, such as what we have with the Federal Reserve, weren't able to counterfeit the money and spend it into the, uh, into the military industrial complex. And uh, therefore, ultimately for economic, moral, constitutional reasons as well as the, the uh, support uh, that, that the fiat is right now, this is related to excessive military spending overseas. And uh, if we act wisely now, uh, we could work our way out of this. But if we continue to do what we're doing, we're going to have an end to the system, but it won't be pleasant because runaway inflation and destruction of a currency is, is very, very bad. And, and that, that is the direction that, uh, that we're going in. You know, um, Taft in the 1950s, I really think the old right uh, that Robert Taft represented... Uh, Even though Taft lost in, in 52, uh, of course it got much worse because uh, his voice was lost after a, a year. But he did have an influence to a degree on Eisenhower, although Eisenhower represented the, uh, the Eastern military type of establishment. Uh, that, uh, Taft had a lot of influence. And although Eisenhower put some money and some advisors into Vietnam, he did restrain himself. He, did, he, he took the advice and, and stayed away from sending the troops in there, which was uh, negated, uh, of course, right after, uh, uh, right after Eisenhower uh, left office. And then the military troops went in and, and led to a problem. But one of Taft's last speeches, uh, after he lost the election and before he died, had to do, of course, with foreign policy and the inadvisability of getting further bogged down. He warned about it and, uh, and predicted it would be uh, catastrophic if we did go in there. So he was very perceptive. But a lot of people ask the question, you know, uh, what if the surge would work? Would you still be opposed to this? What if this work? And on and on. But, you know... The, the truth is, if we're doing the wrong thing, uh, if you're robbing a bank and you're real successful, you say, oh, it went well, nobody was killed, and we got a lot of money. I mean, so it justifies it. No, if it's, if it's the wrong thing to do and it's successful, I mean, you don't want anybody to die, but just because it's successful, you shouldn't reassure ourselves and say, oh, oh, that's okay, it's working. We invaded uh, Grenada. It went well, so I guess we can do this. Uh, you know, we overthrew a dictator in Panama. Oh, that went well, so we can do that anytime. We can do that anytime we want. But eventually, empire catches up to a country, and that's what's happening today. We cannot maintain the empire, and the message is loud and clear. The political message is, is very clear. Uh, even today, uh, we, we, ha we find that uh, the three head can candidates on the other side, and all of them, 
uh, all of them on our side, all say that uh, on our side they say you have to put more and more, spend more and more, and stay forever, and spread the war into Iran. But the other side isn't taking any position on it. They're not saying take everything off the table, even a nuclear first strike again against Iran. They're not saying that. And now they're saying the opposition is saying. Well, we can't, we, we would keep troops there to 2013. You know, there's, there's no serious intent because they do not follow it from any principled constitutional moral position that's just none of our business to be over there and we ought to just come home. Now, the um, fact that we're so much involved all, uh, actually allows us an option for solving some of our problems. Um, because my approach is, is this, when I'm trying to figure out how we get out of this mess that we're in. Um, as a constitutionist, I don't endorse the welfare state, and I don't endorse our, 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 our uh, militarism and, and the uh, empire. But I don't run, they say we didn't have a military empire, and let's say we did have uh, uh, a child's program for children, um, I mean a medical program for children, I probably wouldn't get exercised about that and say, well, what we have to do is immediately take that away from them. Although constitutionally and, and, and uh, economically they don't work. I mean, it, it, it'll fail. So um, we, we, have a, we have a couple, a lot of, a lot of people dependent on, on uh, the government, you know, the retirees, Social Security and Medicare, and now prescription drugs, to start there politically isn't going to work. You, you just can't go out and say, and, and you, I think we heard it the other night, what we have to do what, to, in order to get our budget in shape, this is a typical Republican response, to get our budget in shape, we have to cut all this welfare. Well, you know, uh, it, it doesn't work that way. It, it, politically, you can't work it. But if we only would change our foreign policy, which would reduce spending, it would make us safer, give us a strong national defense, uh, remove the incentive for the radical uh, individuals who are willing to commit suicide and come back, come into this country and kill us, all this stuff would be reduced if we just change, uh, changed our policy. But not only the most important thing is, think of the money we would save. I mean, we're, uh, uh, there, there was one individual who did a study and added up everything conceivable related to overseas activities. And he came up with a figure close to a trillion dollars a year. He expects next year to be over a trillion dollars to maintain our empire. We have, uh, we have over 700 bases. We are in 130 countries. Uh, the, mil the morale of our military is down. Uh, the equipment's in shambles. And what are they doing? Are they talking about reassessment? No, they're talking about bombing Iran. I mean, it, it makes no sense whatsoever. But what if we changed our policy? We could cut two or three hundred billion dollars out of that rather quickly. We could bring our troops home. Not only neutralize the efforts that we're pursuing erroneously, you know, in the Middle East. But what about, what about Europe? Why don't we just come home from Europe and Korea? Don't you think it's time we came home?